Welcome to Jeremy's IT Lab. This is a free, complete course for the CCNA. If you like these videos, please subscribe to follow along with the series. Also, please like and leave a comment and share the video to help spread this free series of videos. Thanks for your help. Also, remember to download and use the Anki flashcards with the link in the description, which will help you very much in remembering what you have learned. Let's get started. This is the eighth lecture in the series and part two on IPv4 addresses. This should be a shorter video than the last one, just covering a few things we missed. Let's go over what we'll cover in this video. I'll do a quick review of IPv4 classes and clarify some things I didn't explain well in the previous video. I'll explain how to find the maximum number of hosts, the network address, the broadcast address, the first usable address, and the last usable address of a particular network. I introduced some of these in the previous video, but it's worth explaining in more detail. Finally, I will outline how to configure IP addresses on Cisco devices, which we'll then practice in Packet Tracer in the next video. So this is the chart of the IPv4 address classes I showed you in the last video. I taught you that the 127 range is reserved for loopback addresses, so it's generally not considered part of the class A range. However, the zero range is also reserved in class A, so some might say class A really begins at 1, making the range 1 through 126. Different sources say different things, so I recommend that you remember class A is 0 through 127, but also keep in mind that 0 and 127 are reserved, so really the usable range is 1 through 126. We also saw this chart from Wikipedia in the last video. Leading bits of 0 for class A, 1 0 for class B, and 1 1 0 for class C. A network number bit field size, also known as prefix length of 8 for class A, 16 for class B, and 24 for class C. A size of rest bit field, also known as the host portion of the address, of 24 bits for class A, 16 for class B, and 8 for class C. The number of networks available in each class. And finally, the number of addresses per network. This is the maximum number of addresses, including the network address and broadcast address. Notice how it's calculated. 2 to the power of 8, 16, or 24, that being the length of the host portion. But let's look at how to calculate the maximum number of usable addresses, the number of addresses that can be assigned to hosts. So let's take this class C network, 192.168.1.0/24. Because it's class C, it uses a slash 24 prefix length, and therefore the last octet, the last eight bits, are the host portion. That means that the host portion can be 0 to 255. So 0 to 255 gives us a total of 256 addresses, which is 2 to the power of 8 because there are 8 bits. But remember those two special address types I mentioned in the last video? If the host portion is all zeros, it represents the network address, sometimes called the network ID. It can't be assigned to a host. Also. If the host portion is all ones, it is the network broadcast address, the address used to send a message to all hosts on the network. It also can't be assigned to a host. So actually, the maximum hosts per network is 2 to the power of 8 minus 2, which is 254 for a class C network like this. Now let's take a look at this class B network, 172.16.0.0 slash 16, through 172.16.255.255. The host portion is 16 bits, giving 65,536 possible addresses. However, this address with a host portion of all zeros is the network address, and this address with a host portion of all ones is the broadcast address. So really, the maximum number of hosts in this network, or any class B network, is 65,534. Now let's do one more example with a class A address, 10.0.0.0 slash 8 through 10.255.255.255. .255 .255.
The host portion is 24 bits. So that gives 16,777,216 possible addresses. This network address and this broadcast address can't be assigned to hosts, however. So the maximum number of hosts in this network or any class A network is really 16,777,214. So the formula for determining the number of hosts on a network is 2 to the power of n minus 2. n is equal to the number of host bits. Now let's calculate the first and last usable addresses for this class C network, 192.168.1.0 slash 24. So this address with a host portion of all zeros is the network address or network ID. Add one by changing the last bit of the host portion to one and you get 192.168.1.1 and that is the first usable address on the network. So that's how you do it. Add one to the network address to get the first usable address. How about the last usable address? Well, this address with a host portion of all ones is the broadcast address. Subtract one from this address by switching the last bit to zero and you get 192.168.1.254 which is the last usable address. Next, let's do the same for this class B network, 172.16.0.0 slash 16. This address with a host portion of all zeros is the network address. Add one and you get 172.16.0.1 and that is the first usable address on the network. How about the last usable address? This address with the host portion of all ones is the broadcast address. Subtract one from this address and you get 172.16.255.254. And that is the last usable address. Finally, let's do the same for this class A network, 10.0.0.0 slash eight. This address is the network address. Add one and you get 10.0.0.1. And that is the first usable address on the network. Next, let's find the last usable address. This address with a host portion of all ones is the broadcast address. Subtract one and you get 10.255.255.254, which is the last usable address. Okay, so hopefully you understand both how to calculate the number of usable addresses in a network and the first and last usable address in a network. Really, we covered this material in the last video, but I wanted to make it clear. Now let's move on to actually configuring a Cisco router with IP addresses. So here's a small network I put together in GNS3 with three small networks connected to a single router, R1. Keep in mind that it's not really realistic to have only a single PC connected to each switch. In a real network, there will be many more hosts and possibly more switches in each local area network. So we have one class A network here 10.0.0.0 slash 8. PC1 has the first usable address in the network, 10.0.0.1, and we will assign the last usable address, 10.255.255.254, to R1's gigabit 00 interface. We have this class B network, 172.16.0.0 slash 16. PC2 has the first usable IP address, 172.16.0.1, and we will assign the last usable address, 172.16.255.254, to R1's gigabit 01 interface. We also have a class C network, 192.168.0.0 slash 24. PC3 has the first usable address, 192.168.0.1, and we will assign the last usable address, 192.168.0.254, to R1's gigabit 02 interface. Let's go into the CLI of R1 and make the configurations. So I logged onto the CLI of R1, and as you can see, I used EN, the shortcut of the enable command, to enter privileged exec mode. Now let me show you a great command you can use to confirm the status of each interface on the device, as well as their IP addresses. That is the show IP interface brief command.
Let's check out the info this command gives us. First off, the interface column lists the network interfaces on the device. As you can see, this router has four interfaces, Gigabit Ethernet 00, 01, 02, and 03. The next column lists the IP address of each interface. As you can see, they are all unassigned at the moment, but we will soon assign IP addresses to the top three interfaces. We'll use this command again afterward to check. Next is the OK column. I think this is a legacy feature of the command. It's not relevant anymore. Basically, it says whether or not the IP address is valid or not. On modern devices, the device won't let you assign invalid IP addresses, so you should never see no in this column. The interfaces currently have no IP addresses assigned, and as you can see, that is considered a valid state. Next is the method column. This indicates the method by which the interface was assigned an IP address. Currently, the status is unset, but let's check what it is after we assign IP addresses. Next is the status column. Basically, you can consider this the layer one status of the interface. If the interface is enabled, there is a cable connected, and the other end of the cable is properly connected to another device, you should see up here. However, here it displays administratively down. This means that the interface has been disabled with the shutdown command. However, I haven't done any configuration on the interfaces yet. So, this is the default status of Cisco router interfaces. We haven't looked at switch interfaces yet, but Cisco switch interfaces are not administratively down by default. They will either be up if they are connected to another device, or down if they are not connected. Notice that even though Gigabit Ethernet 00, 01, and 02 on this router are connected to switches, the interfaces remain administratively down because the shutdown command is applied to them by default. The final field of the output is protocol. While the status column referred to the layer one status of the interface, this is the layer two status. Because the interfaces are down at layer one, layer two can't operate. So all of these interfaces are down at layer two. You'll never see an interface with a down in the status column and up in the protocol column, although the reverse is possible. Once we configure these interfaces and enable them, we should see up in both the status and protocol columns. So remember these points. The status column refers to the layer one status. For example, is the interface shut down? Is there a cable attached, etc.? The protocol column refers to the layer two status. For example, is ethernet functioning properly between this device and the device it's connected to? Expect both of these columns to show up once we're finished with our configurations. So let's configure the gigabit ethernet 00 interface first. I use conf t, the shortcut of the configure terminal command to enter global config mode. Next, to configure the interface itself, I have to enter interface config mode. So, I use the command interface, followed by the name of the interface, Gigabit Ethernet 00. As you can see, it now displays config if beside the hostname of the device. Now, before we move on, let me show you some other ways to enter interface configuration mode. First off, Notice that you don't need the space between Gigabit Ethernet and 00. You can connect them, and the CLI will still understand and bring you to interface configuration mode for that interface. Now, how about the shortcut version of the command? Well, as you can see, there are many possible commands beginning with I from global config mode, so that's too short. However, there is only one option beginning with IN, so that's the shortest version of the command. Keep in mind, you don't have to use or even remember what the shortest version of each command is. For example, I always type INT for interface, even though IN would work too. Just use whatever is comfortable for you. It may even help you remember the commands if you type the whole thing out every time. Okay, now how about the short version of Gigabit Ethernet? Well, 
As you can see, there are multiple options with just G, so you might think that's too short. However, here's something cool. If you type the 00, zero after the G, it works. The CLI will understand and bring you into interface configuration mode for Gigabit Ethernet 00. zero. So, whether you prefer to use shortcuts to maximize efficiency, or take your time and type out the whole command, remember that the command to enter interface configuration mode is interface, followed by the interface name. Now that we're in interface configuration mode, let's set the IP address. That is done with the command IP address, and then you type the IP address. Notice I used the context sensitive help, the question mark, to display the next option, and it is the subnet mask. This is another name for the net mask I referred to in a previous video. As opposed to writing slash eight for this class A address, we will have to write out the subnet mask in dotted decimal. For those of you who have heard of the term subnet or subnetting before, don't worry. We'll cover those topics in depth soon in separate videos. So you may remember slash eight is equivalent to 255.0.0.0. Slash eight means that the first bits are all set to one and a binary octet of all ones is written as 255 in decimal. Next, I enter the command no shutdown. This is the command we use to enable the interface. Remember I said that Cisco router interfaces have the shutdown command applied to them by default? Well, to cancel the command, type no in front of the command like this. Now that we enter the no shutdown command on the interface, we get two messages on the device. The first one says, interface gigabit ethernet 00, change state to up. This refers to the physical layer status of the interface, the status column of the show IP interface brief command we looked at. The second message says, line protocol on interface gigabit ethernet 00, change state to up. This is the layer two status of the interface, the protocol column of the show IP interface brief command. So now if we take a look at the show IP interface brief command, both of those columns should display up. Let's check. Here I use do to let me execute this privileged exec mode command from interface config mode. And notice I used shortcuts instead. sh ip int br instead of show ip interface brief. As you can see, we can now see the IP address. The method is displayed as manual instead of unset and both the status and protocol display up. Seems like our interface configuration was a success. Let's do the configurations for the G01 interface next. I'll give it an address of 172.16.255.254. The prefix length is slash 16. So what will the subnet mask be? So I use the int G01 command to enter interface config mode for the interface. Notice that I didn't type exit to return to global config mode and then type int g01. You can directly switch from one interface to the other. Next, I configure the IP address using the shortcut add for address. Notice the subnet mask of 255.255.0.0, which indicates a prefix length of slash 16. Then I enable the interface with no shut, which is a short version of the no shutdown command. Once again, I get two messages saying the interface has come up. Then I check the interfaces again with show IP interface brief, and you can see that gigabit ethernet 01 has an IP address and its status is up, up. Finally, let's configure R1's G02 interface with an IP address of 192.168.0.254. The prefix length is slash 24. So what do you think the subnet mask will be? So I use int g02 to enter interface config mode for gigabit ethernet 02. Then I configure an IP address of 192.168.0.254 and the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. 
which is equivalent to a prefix length of slash 24. I enable the interface with no shut, and once again I get the two messages indicating the interface has come up. And then once more I check the status of the interfaces with show IP interface brief. Looks like all of the interfaces have been properly configured. Their IP addresses are displayed, their method column displays manual, since I manually configure their IP addresses, and their status and protocol columns show up and up. Before finishing, I want to introduce some more show commands that can be used to check out the interfaces on a Cisco device. First up is the show interfaces command. You can enter just show interfaces, but it shows a lot of information for each interface, so I recommend specifying which interface you want to check. In this case, I specified G00. This command shows primarily layer 1 and layer 2 information about the interface, but also some layer 3. Gigabit Ethernet 00 is up, uh, that means that layer 1 is working. Line protocol is up, that refers to the layer 2 status of the interface. This line is like the status and protocol columns of the show IP interface brief command. Hardware is 1 GBE, meaning 1 gigabit ethernet. Address is 0C1B8444 F000. That's the MAC address of this interface. Notice it says BIA, followed by the MAC address again. I mentioned in a previous video that the MAC address can also be called the burned-in address. Well, that's what BIA stands for. Why is it listed twice? Well, BIA refers to the actual physical address of the interface. However, you can actually configure a different MAC address in the CLI, although usually you won't configure a different MAC address. Internet address is 10.255.255.254.8. This is the IP address, of course. Feel free to take a look at the rest of this information if you want, but I'll explain more of it in detail in a later video. It's all detailed layer 1 and layer 2 information about the interface. Now let's look at one more valuable command. Show interfaces description. Well, as you can see, it has status and protocol columns, like the show IP interface brief command but it also has this description column. Interface descriptions are optional, but can be very helpful in identifying the purpose of each interface. Let's quickly go back and configure descriptions on each of these interfaces. So from global config mode, I once again entered interface config mode for G00. The command to configure an interface description is simply description followed by the description. Now, there aren't any rules regarding how to describe your interfaces. I use hashtags to make the descriptions more noticeable, and then I indicate which device the interface is connected to. I do the same for G01 and G02 using DESC instead of the full description command. I then use the show interfaces description command again, and now you can see the description of each interface. Now, there are many more show commands you can use to obtain information about a device's interfaces. We'll take a look at a few more throughout this course, but for now, remember show IP interface brief, show interfaces, and show interfaces description. Now let's review what we covered. This is the same slide I showed at the beginning of the video, but let's go through and make sure we covered everything. We covered IPv4 address classes, which we also covered in part one, but reviewed in this video. We talked about how to find the maximum number of hosts, network address, broadcast address, first usable address, and last usable address of a particular network. If you're not sure about any of those, go back and listen to that part of the video once more before moving on to today's quiz. Finally, I showed you how to configure IP addresses on Cisco devices, as well as some show commands to gather information about interfaces. Now let's go on to the quiz for today's video. If you want further help remembering what you've studied, remember to download and use the Anki flashcards from the link in the description.
For this quiz, I'll focus on finding the maximum number of hosts, network address, broadcast address, and first and last usable addresses of a network. First up, question one. PC1 has an IP address of 43.109.23.12/8. Find the following: the network address, the maximum number of hosts in the network, the network broadcast address, the first usable address of the network, and the last usable address of the network. Pause the video to find the answers. Okay, let's check. The network address is 43.0.0.0, since only the first octet is the network portion. The maximum number of hosts is 16,777,214, which is 2 to the power of 24, because there are 24 host bits in the network, minus 2 for the network and broadcast addresses. The first usable address is 43.0.0.1, which is the network address plus one, and then the last usable address is 43.255.255.254, which is the broadcast address minus one. Let's go to question two. PC4 has an IP address of 129.221.23.13/16. Find the same five values. Pause the video to find the answer. Okay, so the network address is 129.221.0.0. The maximum number of hosts is 65,534, which is 2 to the power of 16 minus 2. The network broadcast address is 129.221.255.255. The first usable address is 129.221.0.1, and the last usable address is 129.221.255.254. Let's go to question 3. PC8 has an IP address of 209.211.3.22/24. Find the same five values. Pause the video to find the answer. Okay, so the network address is 209.211.3.0. The maximum number of hosts is 254, which is 2 to the power of 8 minus 2. The network broadcast address is 209.211.3.255. The first usable address is 209.211.3.1, and the last usable address is 209.211.3.254. Let's go to question 4. PC5 has an IP address of 2.71.209.233/8 Find the same five values. Pause the video to find the answer. Okay, so the network address is 2.0.0.0. The maximum number of hosts is 16,777,214, which is 2 to the power of 24 minus 2. The network broadcast address is 2.255.255.255. The first usable address is 2.0.0.1, and the last usable address is 2.255.255.254. Let's go to question 5. PC6 has an IP address of 155.200.201.141/16. Find the same five values. Pause the video to find the answer. Okay, so the network address is 155.200.0.0. The maximum number of hosts is 65,534, which is 2 to the power of 16 minus 2. The network broadcast address is 155.200.255.255. The first usable address is 155.200.0.1, and the last usable address is 155.200.255.254. Okay, that's all for the quiz. Hopefully you feel confident in determining the network address, maximum hosts, broadcast address, 
and the first and last usable addresses of a network. As usual, there will be supplementary materials to help you practice and remember what you've learned. There will be review flashcards using the Anki software. Check the link in the description. There will also be a practice lab using Packet Tracer, so you can try out the CLI commands we learned in this video. Good luck with your studies. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment, and share the video with anyone else studying for the CCNA. If you want to leave a tip, check the links in the description. I'm also a Brave verified publisher and accept BAT or basic attention token tips via the Brave browser. That's all for now.